Allow me to introduce you to the worst weapon in Sea of Thieves, the Ashen Wind Skull. Anything that this bad boy can do, a firebomb can do better, not to mention that getting your hands on it is a lot more difficult than running over to a shipwright. So naturally, the boys and I decided to do the only thing that's reasonable, and try to kill a boss with it. Not just any boss, but what about the final boss of Sea of Thieves? Who knows, I might just be too harsh on these things. If we can kill the gold hoarder using only Ashen Wind Skulls, maybe they can be redeemed? But before any of that could happen, we needed to find some. Now, there are several ways of acquiring Ashen Wind Skulls, some of which are more random than others. One way is to simply complete world events until an Ashen Winds event takes their place, since that one guarantees the drop at the end. But unfortunately for us, the server was surprisingly active. Birdie, we might want to adjust our course so it doesn't look like we're coming for this Reaper. Oh, I see, I see the Reaper. Sir, I'll have you know, I was avoiding the rock, so be proud of me for that. <laughs> towards that Brigantine, very cool. Well, no, away from the Brigantine. If we go north, we're going towards the other Reaper. We're literally intercepting that course, Birdie! There's another ship? There's another oh ship, that's my whole point! Yeah, talk about bad luck. Getting into PvP skirmishes would only make an already tedious task take even longer. Though maybe this is something we could use to our advantage? I mean, it doesn't matter who completes these world events, and if these guys want to fight over a skeleton fleet, that actually gives us some time to try a different approach. So long that we are the first to rock up to an Ashen Winds event once that thing actually spawns, we could spend our time completing captain stashes. Returning viewers might remember this to be the loot box of Sea of Thieves Voyages, and as fate would have it, there is a chance for it to drop an Ashen Wind Skull as well. Of course, said drop chance is not very high, meaning we were in for a lot of disappointment up front, and some of us were taking these L's a bit more gracefully than others. You okay over there? On to the next. I can't exactly blame him. Every time we dig up treasure, the game is going to spawn random AI enemies on us. And let's just say that death via gunpowder keg is a lot more merciful than having to fight ocean crawlers. Though I did definitely decide to do the same thing in response to phantoms. But things get really fun when on top of the enemies you spawn as part of the voyage, the game decides to just add some more AI on top. Though thankfully for us, an hour into our grind, we were finally rewarded. Where do you want cannon robots? Oh! Guys, 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 I found the first one. Let's go. Now that we have finally found a skull, we can go kill that boss, right? Oh, sweet summer viewer. Of course, it was not that simple. To access the final boss of Sea we have to play through the final chapter of the Shores of Gold Toll Tale. And part of that Toll Tale includes a gauntlet of traps that we somehow needed to get the skull past. It was only reasonable to assume that if all three of us were to carry one skull through the gauntlet, at least one of us should be able to take it all the way to the end. Which means we have to get two more of these things as a bare minimum. I would love to show you a montage of all of our failed digs that did not end up giving us the item we needed, but I think the collective mental state of my crew would reflect that even better. Ooh, ooh. Ara. 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 <laughs> oh, well, I don't think any of us have the brain, so. No, God, we don't, bro. But just as telling as that was our sheer excitement over finding the second one. I got one! What? Let's go! Number two! Joy was written all over us. We only had a single skull left to go in order to finish our preparation, and thankfully for us, this server was actively taking care of every world event that spawned. Not to mention that we had gotten exceedingly efficient when it came to clearing these maps. But after hours of agonizing over RNG, the game bestowed upon us the last piece of the puzzle. Yo, Ashen Wins! We can get the final one from the Ashen Wins! Let's go! Right over there! Oh. Let's go! Let's go indeed! An Ashen Wins event had spawned. Using the superior speed of the Brigantine, we hide tailed over to the island housing the event to complete it before anyone could intercept. And I mean, not to downplay the content, but we have completed enough of those to be able to get this done in record time. Also shout out to the people stacking the photo of the damned and as such attracting all the attention on the server. With the third and final skull acquired, we were ready to take on the challenge. Can the worst weapon in Sea of Thieves defeat the gold hoarder or is it ultimately going to run out of steam? There was only one way to find out. Onward. Let's drop down that Shores of Gold. Wait, do either of us have a Shores of Gold checkpoint? I do not. I do not either. <laughs> Negative Remos. Wait, let me see. I have Sunken Pearl Chapter 3. I have Revenge of the Morning Star Chapter 3. A legendary storyteller, final chapter. How ironic. Uh, <laughs> onwards to Morrow's Peak. It appeared as though we weren't done suffering yet. Without a checkpoint for the Shores of Gold Total, we would have to complete the entire thing from scratch again. And after three hours of searching for these dang skulls, yeah, none of us really had the patience for that. But complaining was not gonna get us anywhere, so we begrudgingly completed all the puzzles again, just for a chance to face off against the boss. But the hardest part was still before us, because once we had completed all the puzzles, it was time to get past the traps. If you recall my journey to the Shores of Gold video, you might remember that two of us literally died on the very first jump, something that I had to remind my crewmates off before we tackled that challenge. But unsurprisingly, one of us was not entirely present during the briefing. 
<laughs> Birdie, what did I just say? I'm alive. No, no, you don't no, come no, up, no, no, idiot. No, 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 Turn no. around. Turn back out. Oh, hey. Oh, my God, Birdie. At least we managed to not lose any of our skulls on the very first jump. There were a select few parts of this gauntlet where, upon death, retrieving the skull will be literally impossible. Oh, I got yoinked. Oh, me too. Oh, oh. Okay. We're all dead. <laughs> Thankfully, that was not one such part. A lot of the floor and wall traps could be played around fairly easily, even if we get shanked by wonky hitboxes and or bad timing. The truly dangerous part was the jumping section, because it's dark. We figured the best way to complete this part was by dedicating Birdie to holding a lantern to shine the way forward for Brandon and me. We definitely decided to take our time with this because a single wrong step could spell doom to this entire project. Once we were about halfway through, we would go back to do the same thing for Birdie, and things were going well until they weren't. Oh my god, I'm scared. Oh my god. Huh? Oh, okay. I will not move without light. I need light, please. I'm begging. Ah! No! 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 Cliff! And with that, the first skull was lost. I could only hope that two Ashen Wind Skulls would be enough to defeat the boss, because in case you were not aware, these things can and will run out of fire when used extensively. Using them up also diminishes their value, so if you want to make a buck, definitely don't use them as a weapon. Alas, the only thing we could do was to go forward. The most dangerous part of the gauntlet may have been behind us, but that does not mean that we were free to pass. After three hours of setup, the tension was high and the stakes were even higher. And let's just say that this level of pressure is not for everyone. Guys, guys. Kill the skeletons! No, just run past them. Bro. But just move! They're phantoms, they're gonna chase us, goddammit! <laughs> no! You gotta jump, dude. You gotta you jump. You have to jump? Yeah, yes! you have to jump! Do you play video games, dog? Like. In fairness, he did rock up to a session without having slept, so I'm not gonna be too critical of his lack of critical thinking. But at last, we had finally made it to the gold hoarder's chamber. The rules were clear, I could only use my blunderbuss to defeat the skeletons that he summons, but every bit of damage delivered to the boss must come from the Ashen Wind Skull. But it didn't take long for us to realize that our plan had a fatal flaw. He's not catching on fire. Are you serious? Uh-oh. Wait, wait, he's not catching on fire? Yo, Cliff, he's made of gold. Okay, the other guys are catching on fire, right? Brandon, give me this. I was eating. I was eating from my skull. Bro, this is not doing anything! Rare, what do you mean? Yep, as it turned out, and as undoubtedly a lot of you have already commented, the gold hoarder cannot be set on fire. Definitely felt like a kick in the teeth after all the effort we went through to get the skulls to his arena, but hey, at least it proves my point that the Ashen Wind Skull truly is just a very expensive firebomb. But if you want to watch us actually kill that boss, as well as complete all the nine tall tales leading up to it, what about you check out my Journey to the Shores of Gold video? You can find the card on screen right now. But until then, thank you everybody so much for watching. I hope you guys have a day filled with the riches on the sea. And until next time, peace.